Hello, be a girl. One more time. Welcome to um, this talk about bombing. Talk about graffiti in its purest essence. And I stole this dude's name. That was easy. Was my first tag. So it, it's crazy that we're with them tonight, and we're really excited. So here we are. Yep. And even just as musicians, I, you know, we both felt it'd be cool to even just bring a, a mixed audience like this, bring a bunch of people together in a room and talk about the essence of this culture that we fell in love with when we were very young. Like, what, what is in a name? How do you choose a name? Why easy? Why Chino? How did that happen for you guys? I was in junior high school in Vietnam. That comes from uh, me, from my, my demeanor. Because I got all these people that try to talk to me. Like, well, he's just going to call me easy. But prior to that, my name was LC. But my peers and my um, and my family used to make fun of me. They said, hey, low class. I said, well, I got to change that name. Uh, it's, it's part of the choice of the name also just the experience of writing those letters together. Like, easy might have been a nickname, but I'm sure that the way that he ASY put together cemented that. Right? Oh, yes, that was a process. Because when I first obtained the name, I used to have like a home test. I always had a piece of paper to show you guys. That's the way I used to write that. That was the first way. <laughs> These were the first letters of easy, right here. Everyone. Terrible. <laughs> I actually hijacked my cousin. He was a so he was a super local writer that just wrote around the block. He wrote S E A. That E A that you see that I do today comes from him. But I just tweaked it a little bit. In the S, that's something that I created, and uh, in the Y, it's something I played with for a couple of weeks. But that's that's about it. You gotta be able to do it fast. You gotta be able to do it on the go, right? And under pressure. And under pressure. And, under pressure. Well. and if it's the thing you're gonna do the most. It's like having a good smile or a firm handshake, right? It's that one thing that greets the masses on a regular basis. Like, well, what is the, you, you mentioned rules, right? You mentioned some rules. Something's in the streets. You got these writers that's going right over you, and there's a lot of space every place else. I mean, the disrespect, that's just so disrespect. The disrespect is serious. Moving up towards this time, the proliferation of like, handguns and crap on the streets was really prevalent. The murder rate started to go up and graffiti really started to gain traction in the streets. So a handful of guys like Easy, Jaws, myself, Trim, TK, guys that were bombing trains, transitioned to street bombing. But with all of the crime that was going on on the street, it was really such a low priority offense that if, when you got stopped writing, like legitimately the cops would be like, you guys got guns on you? I'm sure a lot of us graffiti fans is, we kind of retrace the itinerary. You know, I was talking to Easy about six, seven years ago. My ride over the Williamsburg Bridge back into Manhattan became a lot more fun because yes. of two people. Yeah, this is what we, we used to do. We used to map out all the main avenues in New York and try to go from the, the beginning of the avenue to the end. And we would do that to every major avenue in New York. And if there was no such thing as a all city street movement when I started doing street. There were no like, people taking a big tag because everybody had so much style with their tag and stuff like that with the, with the stock cats. So we came with the big fat cats and made it simple, not just for graffiti writers to understand it, but for everyone to understand it. And you know what that done? I mean, Mayor Sarge, rest in peace, Mayor Cars, but that gave him another a, a, a big headed. <laughs> I'm sorry. Deal with what some of the active generation are dealing with today. Like kids are catching felonies. Their lives are being ruined and changed. I was doing the same shit I did most of my teenage years, right? But I'm grateful for college. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> one, time, one time for college. Yes, yes. Like back in the 80s, I mean, I got caught so many times. But, I mean, they just. The cops used to like throw me against the wall, like spray paint me, like get the hell out of here. <laughs> they were like, take me to the precinct, like oh, okay, you're a little too young, uh, you can go. Just don't do it. And there was several times, piggyback on what you said, where they said, well, you can't do this in this neighborhood, but you can do it there. Just spray the wall. <laughs> Easy mentioned, you were talking about simplifying your letters, making them so that everyone can read. 
But, uh, you know, before they started, we were talking a little bit about the opposite of that. Uh, when, as a fan of graffiti, especially when you're young and you're first discovering this art form, you need to learn how to decipher some of these tags. You'll have conversations with your friends. I, I think it says this, and I think that's an S, and that's an F, whatever. So, what could you say about that, about um, that sort of insider knowledge of learning how to decode the names and how much that's a part of, of tagging? Like legibility, recognizability. I can tell that easy a Chino tag from, you know, just from the contour of it, but easy was saying that he simplified his shit for efficiency and to be able to see it from afar, like, but, then, but like, like Adrian said, there's a pleasure in being able to read a real esoteric tag as well. Yeah, once, you, once you crack the code, it's, it's a... Oh, you're right, like, you know the language, you speak the language, right. like, you're not excluded from the conversation anymore, but it really is like anything else, you train your eye to be able to decipher some of these complicated letter forms, so... It's something interesting to say, you shared that with me before we started, because you were, you were studying to be, you said, a doctor, and once the joy of writing your name took over. Yes, in the early 80s, particularly like 70s, I was studying to be, I was studying physiology and anatomy to be a doctor, and I was really into like sports as well because I wanted to be a professional baseball player. But after I got man manipulated into the park by my cousin, Josh Fowler, <laughs> and my older brother said four. Yeah, but what, what, really, what really caught my attention when I, I, I took a, a few tags on a three train. This is 1982 when I wrote LC Lopez. When I got to school and, 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 and my peers were like, oh my God, I see your tag on the train. I'm like, wow, you can get famous from doing this. You know, you were saying that this hasn't left you. Still, still out there. There's, there's still things out there. Yes, yeah, so, I'm like, I'm actually, um, I made a conversion inside the art world because Kid 17, Doom, Aldean. But, but this is something that's been read into me for life. This is a lifetime commitment. This is the way I view it, and it will never change. A track and I on our way here were also thinking about like you know, multimedia is such a, multimedia art is such a trendy buzzword. Tagging is, that, they invented multimedia. You got spray, you got paint markers, you got ink markers, you got stickers, you can scratch, you, I mean, extinguishers. Extinguishers. I've always thought it was cool to think back at a time in the free internet when a provider would meet someone from another city and basically become pen pals. I remember you had a friend in Toronto who would send Vancouver. Vancouver would send you pictures of his pieces. And I remember yep. there was there was, I would put his stickers up, you know. And there was an A in his name, and you were like, oh maybe you could do the A and A track or similar to that. There was there was a uh, uh, when I started DJing and getting known a little bit, there's a writer in Switzerland who did a couple of A track pieces and sent me pictures. I didn't know this did. And he put my name up in Switzerland. I thought that was L2 piece on something. Thank you all so much for coming. Great, yeah, you're a great speaker. Hey, yeah. Nice meeting you, man.